Hey YouTube, it's summertime again, which means it's time to look at more myths and methods surrounding the chilling of beer. Firstly, I'm going to submerge this beer in methyl hydrate, which also has dry ice. This chills it to nearly minus 60 degrees Celsius. Just like every other year, my outdoor footage was completely unusable. When I put the beer into the glass with the methyl hydrate and dry ice, it began to chill the way I expected, but at one point I decided to rest it on the bottom. This put the beer bottle directly in contact with the dry ice, causing some of the beer at the bottom to freeze. This made the beer foam over, getting beer into the alcohol and turning it into a big beer alcohol slushy mess. I decided to look at two of the most popular methods found by Google search, wrapping the bottle in wet paper towel before putting it in a freezer, and submerging bottles in a solution of salt water with ice. In every case, I started the beer bottle between 30 and 35 Celsius to simulate being forgotten in the trunk of a car. For the paper towel method, I put thermocouples both inside and outside of the bottle at the same height. This lets us see how quickly the surface of the bottle chills compared to the liquid inside. I also put an unwrapped bottle in the freezer for comparison. On average, the bottles wrapped in wet paper towel cooled off slightly faster than the dry bottles, but appears to me to only be a result of running the bottle under cool water. When you look at the interior temperatures of both bottles over time, there is never more than a 2 degree difference between them for the full 80 minutes, which leads me to believe that there is no real advantage. Strangely, there is a very rapid drop in the interior temperature of the dry bottle right at the end of the test. The drop is reproducible, but I've not been able to isolate the cause. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments. For the ice bath method, I wired two bottles, both with an inside and outside thermocouple, just like the wet and dry bottle method. Then I submerged them in the solution of brine and ice, agitating from time to time. As expected, the brine and ice bath worked very well. Liquid water can transfer heat much more effectively than the cold air of the freezer and the phase transition of ice can absorb a lot of energy in a very short period of time. The spikes seen at the exterior temperature of both bottles are due to my agitating to cooler. I believe the increases of bottles A interior temperature are due to the thermocouple moving away from the bottle surface when it's disturbed. Overall, both bottles got down to 5 degrees in under a half hour, significantly better than both the wet and dry bottles in the freezer. Finally, for the dry ice bottle, I used four thermocouples, one inside the bottle and three on the outside. As soon as the bottle hit the minus 60 degree alcohol, the bottom and body temperatures dropped. The neck remained warm as it had not yet been submerged. In the first 40 seconds, there is very little change in the interior temperature, as the alcohol is a poor conductor of heat and the glass at the bottle must be chilled before the interior can begin to cool. Once the glass has cooled down, the interior of the bottle drops to below 5 degrees in just over a minute and a half. However, given the cost, complexity, and cleanup requirements for this method, I would strongly recommend the water and ice and salt bath for emergency beer cooling. I hope you found this video interesting, and if you'd like to see more like this, check out my channel. Thanks for watching.